Welcome to COD. Have a drink, play a game, or if you dare, order a shot. But when it comes time to pay, you better be ready. If I asked you, what way will this coin land, what would you say? It's a tough question to answer just by looking at the coin, but if you knew all the properties of the coin and the environment it's in, you can make a very accurate prediction. Of course, there are some factors about the coin that are inherently random, but as far as the coin flip is concerned, they have little effect on the outcome. So if true randomness does not play much of a role, then why do coin flips appear that way? Let's have a look at something that's a bit simpler. As we're all aware, pancakes don't bounce, which is kind of important. When a coin strikes the ground, the bounce it takes is highly dependent on what it lands on. Every surface around us, even the flat ones, contains an almost infinite amount of bumps, crevices, and imperfections that may alter the way the coin bounces. A pancake, being a pancake, doesn't have to worry about these things. Let's see what happens when we flip one like a coin. Without any bouncing, the result of our new and improved coin toss is almost completely reliant on a few basic factors. This would be its spin, its velocity, and its height from the ground. These variables all work together to produce the final outcome. Spin is the most important factor here. When the coin hits the ground, whatever side happens to be facing up will be the result. Spin is the only thing that allows the coin to transition between its two outcomes. We can demonstrate this by getting our chef to flip many more pancakes with varying degrees of spin. There's an interesting pattern in the tosses that were just performed here. Here is a graph with the result of each toss displayed with how fast it was spinning. You might think that the results would look random, but as you can see, they are neatly organised into sections. These sections occur because of the coin's shape. When landing on the ground, the coin has an 180 degree cone where it will funnel into a specific result. Unless it lands on its side, in which case, stop feeding your family pancakes. The coin can only come to a stop when it's flat, so a slightly faster coin may rotate more, but gravity will remove the extra rotation when it lands. The inverse applies to slightly slower coins, which will receive extra rotation. This funneling effect is what's responsible for the sections on the graph. Unfortunately for our chef, the data from his flipping adventure has been made public. If you would like to avoid the same fate, then you should try NordVPN. Browsing the internet without security leaves you open and vulnerable to advertisers and internet providers who will happily steal your data and sell it for profit. The rise of online services in the last few years has only made this worse as internet scammers have become much more sophisticated in their methods and strategies. That's why it's extremely important, now more than ever, to have protection. NordVPN is an app for your computer or smartphone that encrypts all of your data and sends it through a secure VPN server so that your internet provider cannot see your activity. It adds extra security to your network traffic, which thwarts hackers and data collecting companies and helps keep your internet browsing secure. NordVPN is a worldwide brand, so no matter where you are, you will have a server near you that can provide fast, secure, and reliable internet access. One of my favourite features about NordVPN is that I can connect to any server I want around the world and experience the internet as if I was in that country. For example, I can connect to the servers in the US and watch US Netflix. Just one click on the app and you gain so much power, security, and anonymity. It's a no-brainer. Go to nordvpn.com slash b2studios and you can get a two-year plan at a huge discount plus four additional months for free. And if you aren't satisfied, use Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee to get a full refund. That's nordvpn.com slash b2studios or if you don't like typing, use the link in the description. Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Alright, where were we? Oh, that's right. So we know how the spin rate affects coin tosses, but what about the other two factors? Height and velocity are closely related. They are the two variables responsible for the coin's path through the air, or in other words, it's airtime. In order to rotate, a coin needs to have angular momentum, but it also needs time to spin before it hits the ground, so both height and velocity play a crucial role in the toss. Let's have a look at how height works. As a general rule, the higher the coin starts, the more airtime it gets. Gravity doesn't like that, so it works against the coin's height to bring it to the ground. You can visualise the effect this has with zones. As the coin falls down, it travels through the first zone rather slowly, but each zone that comes after that passes by faster and faster due to the speed it's gathering. Each zone is the same height as the rest, and yet it receives less time the further down it is. If you were to expand the tower by adding some height, you would find that the zones underneath are even more meaningless. 
This concept is known as diminishing returns, and it really restricts how much airtime we can get out of the coin solely through height. So if you're vertically challenged, this is your lucky break. It really doesn't pay much to be tall here. It's much easier to simply throw the coin higher, or in other words, give it more speed. Speed works a bit differently to height when it comes to its effect on airtime. If you start a coin toss from the ground, then you will gain a proportional amount of airtime for speed, regardless of how fast the toss is. The faster a coin is launched, the higher its apex is. While high may have diminishing returns on airtime, speed actually has increasing growth on height. These two effects cancel each other out, and thus, the amount of airtime gained is proportional to the amount of speed. If we decide to do the coin toss like a normal person, then this is no longer the case. The extra height breaks the symmetry of the toss, making speed and airtime no longer proportional to each other. This extra height works the same as before, contributing to airtime in the form of diminishing returns. This really annoys the original height, who formed the High Flyer Society and bullied their lower counterparts. We have now covered the basic physics of a coin toss in midair. So now, it's time to reveal where the randomness is. It turns out, the most random part of a coin toss is you. Yes, it's true. Your inability to repeat the same throwing action is the biggest culprit. This is what gives it that random appearance. You're just bad at throwing coins. It wouldn't be fair just to blame you though. The coin itself is also responsible. Here is a graph with all the variables we've discussed together. You can see heads are represented by red and tails are represented by blue. When presented this way, the physics of a coin toss produces bands. While these bands may look distinctive on the graph, the difference between them in terms of the variables is extremely tiny. And that's the key to understanding the randomness. The system is chaotic. If you were to change the height, speed, or spin rate by the tiniest amount, it would make a massive difference on the result. So much so that to any person performing a toss, it appears random. There are some things you can do to make the toss appear even more random. Like letting the coin bounce, which would introduce a crazy amount of new variables from the environment. But where's the fun in that? You came to this video to learn how to cheat, so now I'm going to show you how to do that. Using what we know now, we can practice a simple method for making coin tosses consistently show the same result. The first step is to make sure that the same side faces up when you begin the coin toss. On most coins, you can feel this in your hand without having to look at it, so you can do this without drawing any suspicion. Next, think about how long you want the coin to be in the air for, and get used to counting that amount of time out in your head. The result of any coin toss is determined by its spin rate and the amount of time the coin is in the air for. So once you get the spin rate consistent enough, all you have to do is catch it when that amount of time has passed. So if you flick the coin too high, raise your hand, and if you flick it too low, lower your hand. Start with low tosses. As you get better, toss the coin higher and higher. This will increase the difficulty. The faster spin rate will trouble you, as the window of opportunity to get the right result will get smaller. The diminishing returns on height will also affect you as moving your hand will now make less of a difference on a faster falling coin, but with enough practice, these obstacles can be overcome, and you'll look like you're flipping normally. After 15 minutes of practicing this, I got heads to come up 70% of the time on 80 tosses. Several other people also tried this and managed to get similar results, getting heads around 70% of the time as a group. So there you go. Now you know how to cheat on coin tosses. And it ain't easy, but with enough hard work, you too can get everyone you know to never trust you with the coin again.